morning, everyone. Welcome to Knitting with Nancy. I'm here at the Stitch and Post with Val, and we have a lot to show you today. Not a lot of new techniques, but I wanted to go over some like Christmas gifts and things to do, and I wanted to talk about the pitch sweater for a little bit. Um, unfortunately, we can't meet in the store, uh, so some of the ladies are finishing it up online with me. But let's look at I put together some new kits and they are up online and they're using two books the luxury yarn one skein yun, the wonders and the lace one skein wonders and I made some special little bags everyone has a different bag with it that I sewed um, and that one is the Luxury Yarn, and it comes with two skeins of Shibui. Each are two, now I know it says one skein, but I love the Shibui Birch Yarn. It's a beautiful fingering weight. And I wanted to make sure you had enough to do, um, rather than taking a sock yarn that has 400 yards, these have 265 each. The other one is the Lace One Skein Wonders. And it's really fun because my friend Sarah Hood and Laura uh, Hein Eckel is in there as uh, designers on uh, two of them. And we use the Anzula Cloud yarn. And so there's two colorways, Elephant, which is the gray, and Lenore, which is the purple. So I got to pick my favorite colors. Hope you enjoy those. Uh, they make really nice gifts for people who you know are knitters. The other I have two other books I wanted to show today. This is the Crochet One Skein Wonders, and it's a really nice book. I don't know if I featured it here yet um, on a Wednesday, but if you're a crocheter, and I know I mostly do knitting, um, it's a really nice book. The other book which I put up here is Crochet Borders. Edie Ekman is also part of this crochet book. She's a wonderful, crochet designer. Why I love this book uh, and wanted to talk about it, and we'll probably do more in the beginning of the year when we do our sweater knit along um, to mid to late January, but this is different edges. So think about how you could finish a sweater, the sleeves of a sweater with a really cute little crocheted edge or something that just adds a little detail. So they're just, it's not just for like a granny's blanket. Um, I have this book in my library to, again, to do sleeve borders, front borders that you don't put buttons on. Or even if you do, think about this as a buttonhole that you could put a little button through here and edge your front of your sweater with it. So it's a really cool thing and I hope you'll think about those. Um, the other gift ideas we have that I've laid out on the table are some of our favorite. Um, I showed the natu natural mesh bag. This is new for us and I'm going to open this up. This is Coco Knits Craft Caddy. It's $28.50. It is really cool. So you know your blue jeans that we all grew up with, the Levi's, and you had the tag that could be washed in the back? Well, that's Craftex, and that is the fabric of this. So it is washable. So it's really cool. You open it up. I brought handles because we can do handles. There's nice pockets inside here. Then there's outside pocket here. And again, in the front. And this is two divided. So it's really nice. And then we have different, two different types of handles, or you could use anything you want. Two different leather handle kits in two sizes. The larger ones are $24, the smaller ones are 22. And they tell you how to put them on so you get a nice set of handles here. And you should tie, open that up and tie it on there. Open Let's, it do it. It Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, I think I need the bigger ones, though, now. To nope, I saw it with the short ones. Oh, she short, saw it with the short ones. Well, I don't know. Let, I could be wrong. Now, 
has never walked. <laughs> but while I'm opening this up, why don't you pan? Because I also brought out cocoa knits and we have a few new things of cocoa knits. Look what's there, it's so cool. That is, here I'll do it just cause I love, first off, my favorite color, but it feels really, really good. And it's, it's a metal. great tape measure oh, no. and it's a metal tape measure. So it's gonna last longer. And I have to say, my grandmother growing up, we used to go to Florida all the time. I had plates and somewhere I still have plates and little bowls in this pattern. I love this. I already own it. I... And then we have my other favorite. You know, Val, I've never done this. <laughs> She's taxing me today. I think it's these ones. Oh yeah. So you put it on the front, put it like that. So this is gonna go mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And this goes in the back. Oops, sorry, um, people. Let me, yeah, let me, wait, get this through here, because it ties on the inside. We're gonna, right? I'm gonna come show them what you're doing. So I've just put it through. Look how easy that is. And then this goes here. And you if I can not. Okay, it was really easy going the other, I'm gonna do it this way just for ease, but it goes the other way. But for time, I did it backwards. I'm sorry, people. And then you just tie this in a knot. And I'm not going to tie because I'm going to take it off and do it the right way. But look how cute this is. Oh, my gosh. That was right. It goes, but it goes to I the know. side. It goes to okay, this side. good. Yeah, see? Look at that. Okay. So instead, I'm going to come and tie it out there. We see how you want that to, you want the tie on the outside I want the tie of this one I just want to see what it looks like if I did it the other way and then people could pick which way they like I don't think that's there's a true right or wrong that's true there? it could be cute with the knot on the outside because then you could also take a little button and feed this through a cute little button if you wanted oh a little gosh. button, Look at how cute or that is. put a stitch marker. Now, I know I'm getting stitch markers in our Naughty and Nice kit. What if you hung a little stitch marker here? Wouldn't mm -hmm. that be cute? See, I kind of like it with the tie on the outside. Very nice. And I like, and to be honest, why I would probably put them on the outside. So you get caught up on the it inside. It wouldn't get caught mm -hmm. up because I would use this for yarn. You're right. And knitting. You're so right. this way it wouldn't get caught up on my knitting because I wouldn't have. Look at how cute they are. So, but is that not adorable? Oh gosh. You know what? You just sold another one to me. I need something to carry my knitting around in. So what is this right here? So what I want to show people, and I'm showing the haberdashery, the darning needles again, because I'm going to talk about them today in darning. Oh, and these are my new favorite scissors, along with Kai. I've already shown the Kai scissors. Um, but these we just got in, these perfect little scissors. I'm using them at home and in my knitting for little snips. They're really cool. So this is the pitch sweater. A lot of you know, uh, I started this. It was an in-store project. It is a pattern from Brooklyn Tweed. I'm using Ultra Alpaca for it. And I'm up to where I'm sewing it together. Um, I'm actually gonna borrow that tape measure because something I've gotten a lot of questions on is how to measure armhole and to what it says and how do I do that so if I borrow this for a second as a straight line and you can use a ruler when you bind off for your underarm here a lot of people think that you take a tape measure and hold it here and measure up and wow that they go I'm too big I'm at nine and a half that's not correct. And the reason why is this is bending around your arm. 
So to measure an armhole, you are going to come straight across and I come over about four or five inches. So I can come straight up. Now this, because it has a sloped bind off, I had to measure to here. Okay, so show us how you do that. So now you're gonna take your measure and your new Coco Knits one. And if you notice, if I follow it straight across, here's where it is. And I needed to go up eight inches on mine. I think it was a little more than eight. And if you look to here, I'm at, I think it was eight and a half. And that's the correct measurement. And the same when you're doing so pretty. the front. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna come over to the straight. And if you look, look how this looks like it's dipping down. And it's not because I know I, I bound straight off. So follow that row straight across. And then it's from that point, and I don't have this lying flat. You want to make sure you are on a flat counter. See how I'm doing this and it'll look bigger because I'm bending it over something. You wanna make sure it's on a table or something flat when you measure. And now I wanna talk about bind offs and what happens um, and I had some people call on the front. If you notice, we put a pocket in on this and it has this little flare, which I haven't blocked this. So this will block a little flatter with that. But most times I bind off in pattern, which would be knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And if you come to here, and these were all knit stitches, but the center one, and if I had bound off in knit here, it would have flung this way out. And let me show you what I mean. These knit stitches that you see here would have been flipped to the outside. And I didn't want that look. I want it to look nice and flat when I block it. So I knit, un I bound off in pearl, all of these. And I spoke about this once before when we talked about the Koigu shawl and we did the center triangle here. And that you cast on here and we're increasing each side to do a triangle and then it says bind off. And if I bound off in a knit for here, it would have flopped it forward. And I wanted a more finished looking edge. So I bind off in pearl. And what that does again is here you can see it's taken the knit stitch to the back and it gives it a very smooth look on it. Now, a lot of you will have your own special ways of binding off. Um, we have the book coming in of cast on bind off again, and I'll start showing some um, in December, later December, probably in New Year's, different cast on and bind offs. We have a new supplier for that. Um, but it does make a difference when you bind off what your finished product looks like. So think about that how you want it to lay, and what you want it to look like. Now the beauty of this sweater, and again, I wanna talk about measuring today and sewing together. Um, this was a really easy sweater to measure the height of because we had cables here. So if I wanted to make sure my front and my back line up perfectly without counting rows, 
I can do it by counting cables because the cable pattern here is the same as the cable pattern here. The height or the length from the underarm to the bottom was the same on the front and back when I had to come off, bind off for the underarm. So to make sure my front and back matched, I just counted my cables up. So I knew I had 24 cables between here and here. So now I have 24 cables between here and here. And now how does that help my sewing together? It means my edge stitches will line up perfectly side to side when I sew together or join. When you, a lot of patterns talk about blocking first and I usually do not block first because if I'm off in my heights from front to back and I need to fudge a little, I don't want it blocked to size. I want to block it afterwards so it lies flat. On this pattern pitch, I can steam block first or wet block if I so choose. Or you can wait till after because either way you need to do a second blocking on it um, just to make sure everything lies. I wanted to also show today if we have a little more time and I might have to wait. Where's my scissors? When I want to measure how much thread or yarn. Um, this pattern says to take a thinner sock yarn. I usually like um, joining my pieces or sewing them together in the same yarn, unless it's a bulky yarn. Anything chunky or higher, I am gonna use a thinner yarn. But I wanna make sure I have enough of a tail here and enough here. So look at how long my piece is. Now, it doesn't mean I can't stop in the middle and join a second piece. I'm not gonna lock or weave in my ends, I should say, at the beginning, but I am gonna lock the bottom. And I just wanted to quick do a quick tutorial on that. So I'm coming in my very bottom edge stitch. And I leave about a six, seven inch, this is probably eight inch tail. And I'm gonna go across to my other edge stitch. And notice how I'm kind of pulling that bind off edge out because I wanna get right into that stitch. Whoops. And right away, I let me take this out. I started. So here it is. And now, before I do anything, I want to kind of lock this. So I'm going to come back through that same one. And this is the only time I've gone over my stitch. Because now I'm going to come up again through that stitch I just did. And notice how I gave it, it's a little tighter there. And now, if I lay these side by side, can you see that they are going to line up perfectly? So I'm going to go, this is a bump to a bump. It's a little weird on the bottom here. And I'm pulling straight across. 
and I like to hold this above. And now I'm coming up to the next stitch in between, stitch to stitch. And I can now weave back and forth, bump to bump, stitch to stitch. And now in between. Stitch to stitch. And can you see if I hold this this way? I don't know if Val can get close enough. Bumps, stitch, bumps, stitch, bump, stitch. Mm -hmm. And it will line up perfectly all the way up. And so take your time, make sure you look at it and you like what you see. If you don't like what you see, take it out. It's why I don't weave this in yet. Because if I don't like it, I can still undo all of this. But it's the one time that I love, I happen to like putting sweaters together, but they line up beautifully on that. And you're gonna do that. So that was today's. I know I got a lot into it. Um, any questions, just shoot me a quick note. I hope you have a great day. Please stay tuned. Yesterday was the first day of our knitting advent calendar. So check out our Instagram, it is also up on Facebook. Today was the second day it'll release. We've taped it, but it won't release until noon uh, Pacific time um, up on Instagram. And they'll come every day I'm taping and you'll see how the project is progressing. Have a great day and see you next week. Bye. Hold on, it's not stopping. Uh oh.